on video game movie anatomy, nothing is true and everything is permitted. Tonight, we're talking about the Assassin's Creed movie. I totally ruined that, but come on, join us. Welcome to Popcorn Talk, featuring movie discussion, news, and interviews. Popcorn Talk, we talk movie. And now, here's Popcorn Talk's video game movie anatomy. Hello everybody and welcome to another episode of Video Game Movie Anatomy. We're coming to you right after the premiere, well right after the premiere, uh, the day after the premiere of 2016's Assassin's Creed. Uh, we have one missing in action, he is currently in the Animus doing research on his probably really, really cool ancestors. Peter the Deez is not with us tonight in studio, uh, but joining me as always we have the one and the only Mrs. Stacey Shuttleworth. Hey guys, I'm Stacey Shuttleworth, you can find me online on Instagram and Twitter at Stacey Shuttles or or online all over the web at Nerds Doing Stuff, where I'm a nerd doing stuff. And I'm the internet's Mark B. Donicky. You can find me on Twitter at Mark B. Donicky. You can find all of us here at the Popcorn Talk Network at the Popcorn Talk on Twitter. So, uh, as you can tell, uh, we may <laughs> or may not be fans of the Assassin's Creed franchise. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, today, let, let's give a, a quick breakdown of the movie we're talking about, Assassin's, uh, Assassin's Creed, directed by Justin Kurzel. Uh, and the breakdown is when Callum Lynch explores the memories of his ancestor Aguilar and gains the skills of a master assassin, he discovers he is a descendant of the Secret Assassin's Society. There's a lot of S's in that. So many. That's a lot. So many. Um, so... Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about our history with the franchise. Um, this is one that uh, if, if people feel like you need to be uh, experienced in the video games in order to, to properly talk about a movie, this one we're probably fine with. Stacey, what, where good. did you get started with the Assassin's Creed franchise? Uh, I picked it up with Ezio. Mm -hmm. uh, started With two? With two. Okay. So I started with two. I went back and played, you know, um, the game of four mm -hmm. after that. Uh, was not as sold on it as I was with Ezio. He was my, my first assassin. Yeah. Kind of uh, like your first doctor, right? <laughs> <laughs> the, the reviews for two, I can remember, were so stellar. Mm -hmm. That was my first game as well. Um, I, I remember everybody saying the ideas in, in Assassin's Creed 1 are great, but I just can't really get into it. And we have, with our boy Ezio, we have a character that uh, appeals to all sorts of folks, mm -hmm. really. So... When it comes to Assassin's Creed 2, Assassin's Creed Brotherhood, Assassin's Creed Revelations, Revelations is where I, where I first went back to play as Altair. Okay. Um, and then of course we get uh, we got Connor. We all we got way, <laughs> we go through the gambit. <laughs> yeah, we got we got way way too many folks. Um, I couldn't get through Assassin's Creed 3 from a story perspective as well as I just I just couldn't get started for me. Okay. The 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 tutorial was way too long. But, um, Those did drag. They, they, they oh, did. Oh man. Um, played a lot of Black Flag. Played a little bit of Unity, but way after the fact where it was relevant because it got it was it launched super buggy. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm all the great stories from the bugs. Certain, and and wonderful photos from yes. the bugs as well. Um, really happy that Ubisoft has learned from. Maybe we should slow down a bit. That our, our games are missing quality as a result. So um, I'm finally now picking up Syndicate. I'm a I think I'm about a quarter of the way through. I'm loving it so far. I love the characters. It reminds me of Ezio because mm -hmm. our two characters are just that characters. And the uh, the the cast of city characters, your your um I wanna say I wanna say Hank Green, but that's not his name. Um, Henry Green, that's what it is, uh, who is a fellow assassin from India. Um, you've got Charles Darwin, you've got mm -hmm. like that's bringing the history into it and bringing in a, a, a healthy world. Syndicate is awesome. I love it. When did you fall off of the franchise? So, okay. So, around three is kind of where I um, got a little less enthused about it. Mm -hmm. I played it all the way through. I did. Uh, and I enjoyed it. I mean, I essentially spent all of my time just running around and killing people and not actually doing the story quest. It took me <laughs> a really long time to get back to the main story quest. Loved Black Flag. Black Flag um, I explored every corner of the universe over and over again mm -hmm. in that one. And then I started Unity, and it wasn't that I didn't enjoy playing Unity, although there were a lot of bugs and that was kind of a turn off, mm -hmm. uh, but it was just at a time in my life where I got really busy and I didn't play any video games for a while. So Unity just kind of fell to the wayside there. Mm -hmm. 
For, uh, for me with Black Flag, it was, I get to sail around and listen to people sing yeah, pirate shanties. Amazing. I'm in. I'm super in. Let's find some treasure. Let's do this. Let's do that. Absolutely. But yeah, Unity was, was a, a big part of like, all right, starting to fall off. And not only with Syndicate getting everybody back in Assassin's Creed's good graces, but um, I would say the Chronicle series uh, mm. that takes place in Russia, India, and China. Uh, also, they re-released the Ezio collection, remastered for the Xbox One and the PS4 and PC. Right. Pretty, I mean, 60 bucks. I'm going to wait a little bit, yeah. but just because they're games that I've played already. <clears throat> mm-hmm. But I love the Ezio games. Um, and now here we are at a, a new frontier for Ubisoft's uh, Media Blitz. Uh, the Assassin's Creed movie slash franchise was supposed to be the first step in a Rainbow Six movie, in a Division movie, in this, that, the other thing, with with all other, hopefully a Rayman movie, because I think that would be fun as hell. But um, before we get into our deep reviews, and, and as a reminder, we are going to be technically talking about spoilers, so mm-hmm. I'm going so to take away the technically, we are going to be spoiling the movie if you haven't seen it. We're, we're gonna tell you right now whether you should or not. Stacy, yes. what is your ultimate opinion of the Assassin's Creed movie? And you know what? Don't listen to what all the critics are saying. This was... Over- Except for these ones. Except, Except for, for these us. Ones. We're the, we're the ones. good critics you want to listen to. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you for... <laughs> yeah. uh, you know what? It's kind of getting trashed a little bit in a couple of places. I disagree uh, as a fan and just as watching the movie in general. I think it brings up a couple of really interesting ideas. Um, and it does have some original stuff. I know there's a complaint about it being too much in the modern day world. Mm. I actually really enjoyed that. And we get some of the classics from the game that the gamers are going to go, oh, hey, I remember doing that. Mm. And then <laughs> there were also, there's some Easter eggs in the in the vault. There's so much just stuff. There's so many mm-hmm. artifacts around. But you can see Jacob Fry's cane. You can see Ezio's gauntlets. You can see, like, you can see stuff from the game that you can recognize. I think uh, mm-hmm. Edward Kenway's Cutlass is in it as well. A lot. There's a yep. lot in there to find for Assassin's Creed fans because it, if if you played, if you let's go back to Assassin's Creed 2, uh, you have to collect all of your little brother's feathers uh, in order to 100% this game. It, and th- this movie has so much visually working for it. It changes up the a lot of the basic ideas of the franchise. The Animus itself isn't just a couch. It is a full motion like plug into your nervous system experience so that it makes it not just it, it makes it more thrilling for to watch on screen but also it makes more sense why these why these uh, uh, these mm-hmm. assassin descendants would relearn the skills of their of their ancestors because they're reliving it they're they're retraining their body for something that they haven't done in centuries and it looks so cool. It does, yeah. It's really cool. That was that was a really, really good direction to go with the Animus. And and it starts really bizarrely, like <laughs> very <laughs> a little a little more different than we're used to an Assassin's Creed story starting where you sort of get introduced into the world and then it sort of like fades in the the title and you see the eagle flying by. Oh, um, but and we'll talk about the eagle. But uh, this one it was more like <laughs> Assassin's Creed. <laughs> they were there. It was, dude. They went so. It, it was so. It was a little. <laughs> at, at the top, I was like, "Oh crap! What are, what are we getting oh ourselves my. into?" But uh, by the end of the movie, I, I, we both recommend, and our significant others recommend, uh, Robbie, uh, your husband, being one who is a fan of the franchise, mm-hmm. and my wife Andrea, who is not but likes historical action, historical fiction, historical drama. Um, it, top scores are from across the board. You will not be bored going to Assassin's Creed. It's it's a fun movie. Go watch it. So let's get into some of the stuff that we like to do here at Video Game Movie Anatomy. Why don't we start with what we call our speed run. For example, you, you look at the back of the box at your local GameStop, your local Best Buy, your local Target, what have you. EB Games, you know, a game store. And you see like a little blurb. We're, we're doing a quick review of the movie. For example, Mortal Kombat has a cheesy script but nails the spirit of the game. Pretty quick. Pretty to the point and pretty accurate. Stacy, I know you haven't, haven't had much time. I know. Um, well, because well, we, we saw the movie last <laughs> night, so this this whole prep process has been pretty. <laughs> and I on usually fire. usually I write them all out, and I don't have anything written. But uh, <laughs> so my back of the box, basically, Assassin's Creed is a really well done visually um, 
piece that kind of really t- takes you into the assassin and templar struggle and while the story is still a little vague kind of like the games where if you're a gamer you will absolutely enjoy and understand mm-hmm. what's going on and even as a non-gamer there's a lot to look forward to mm-hmm. for me <coughs> i would say assassin's creed is one of the most uh, accurate video game representations without being a direct uh, a, a direct adaptation and it mm-hmm. can it it's so, it raises so many questions to keep you interested to see what happens next and might even get you to turn on one of the games whether it's one of the ones on mobile whether it's one of the ones on console I think this does the most as a transmedia property to get people into the world of Assassin's Creed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I I, I totally think so. Um, Our next thing that we like to do is we like to talk about our controller toss moments. That is a mo- uh, No, I don't want to throw Ezio. Um, That is a moment (laughs) where you're watching the- No, and these are yours too, so I feel bad. I I left my Ezio at home. Um, (laughs) It's pretty bad. It's where you're watching the film and you silently or loudly have a, you have got to be kidding me! And we did have some other folks in the theater that that I'm going to mention mm-hmm. that that weren't for me. I, it was a moment that I super dug, but uh, the cr- the crowd was just like, "Come on, really, Stacey? Do you have any?" I think there's one that we both agree on. Yeah, there's one that we both agree on. I'm going to start with one that I actually is a positive one, mm-hmm. uh, and it was the first uh, time when we're in we're back in the Animus with Aguilar, and he's crouched up on top of a rooftop, ready to take out his first mark, and just insta-kill from above and it was just yeah, one of those the- reliving it from the game and that was that was the moment i was like yes i am here this is happening this is happening we're watching this, this we're experiencing it. it i pressed x or i pressed square or i pressed circle whatever you want to do it was the satisfaction of that like <laughs> just clean insta-kill and it, it there's something that that i wonder i want i want to ask uh, uh andrea again um mm-hmm. because from the game the when you're sort of taking out different marks and, and lookouts and this and that, their field of vision seems to be really small. Like, you're right in front of them, and you, like, miss with throwing knives a couple times. And just like, what? And, I don't and, know. And, and they barely see <laughs> no. it. So, so I had a moment during that scene where I was like, how is nobody seeing him running toward and jump? Now nah, it's Assassin's Creed Straight logic. Straight from the game. Which is fine. Straight from the Straight game. Straight from the game. I like that one. <laughs> um, one of the negative ones... Uh, that the that I didn't have, but that some of the uh, another member of the audience or a couple members of the audience had is um, actually I'll connect it with one of my positive ones is the most of uh, that we get of the, the the Spanish Inquisition is an escape scene uh, with uh, Aguilar and Maria trying to escape from being executed from being burned alive and it is a and and this isn't just like conjecture this it is a nonstop heart pounding thrill ride of of an escape where there's multi levels there's parkour there's arrows there's swords there's there's uh knives there's there's so much awesome assassinry but so so you're seeing it from the past and then when you cut back to the future with Callum uh uh which, which is uh Michael Fassbender's character experiencing it and the whole rest of the team at Abstergo watching there's a moment where Marion Cotillard's character Sophia says, "He's synchronizing," <laughs> which sounds ridiculous if you it don't know the game. It sounds but does. but like I'm I'm sure we we were both because I was I was going like, "Fuck yeah, yeah he's, he's, fucking, synchronized. he's synchronizing, dude! Yeah, it's totally. metal as hell." <laughs> oh man, no, so, that was a good time. So cool, like. <laughs> And, but you could definitely tell where where people leave their suspension of disbelief, like right in their pocket, as opposed to us who hung up our assassins' coats on the on the coat rack and were like, "I'm going whatever we're I get here. in this movie is what I get." Um, but yeah. Um, and then, uh, do you have any more, or should we get to the well, one that we agree on? I'll touch on just that okay. that crazy chase scene. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've lived through so many of those in that game because my <laughs> gameplay style is run out into the madness and just. Chase my way out of it. Kill everything that stands until there's no more. Mm -hmm. And I'm safe. That's how my hiding works in that game. I'm a throwing knife magnate. That's me. (laughs) Is I load up. If I got to take down a stronghold, it's I work my way to the inside. Or if I have a, if I I walk up, if I have a clear shot of the dude, then I'll just go, whap, whap, whap. And then then it's like, escape. All right, whatever. Yeah. It's like, hey, you should be a lot higher of a level. Nah, I'm good. No, no, no. So you, so you you skirt the edges. I run right through the middle and just let them all come at me. <laughs> no, it's, it's chaos and it's terrible. It's like probably the the most heart wrenching thing, or not heart wrenching, but like just 
like come on Heart the brink, pumping. on the brink Blood of bl- death constantly. Just you know, load up on on uh, as, med as I've patches. Got seven of them on me <laughs> at one time. It's you know, man, that scene was great. It always worked. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so um, I, I and, identified and, with that. And also, as, <laughs> as a note, we didn't see it in 3D. There's a lot that was you know like 3D gimmickry that we could suspect would look pretty cool, but mm. I don't know. I'm I'm gonna be seeing this movie again. And I, I kind I want to see if the, if the folks that that I go with want to see it in 3D. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah, I, I even without seeing it in 3D, I think it would be awesome in 3D. I, I would, yeah, there was some. Well, especially when you're um, when he's in the Animus mm-hmm. and it's playing through like the glimpses of the past right there. I think that would be really cool in 3D. Yeah, Can or or even it? just the sense of space where mm-hmm. for um, and we're gonna talk about some some game references. But the with the the first leap of faith that you see, mm-hmm. I, I can't imagine that that in three D not being some sort of jarring. Gotta be yeah. It's pretty cool. Pretty spectacular. Um, <laughs> so our last controller toss moment is one that we all agreed on. So one of the big <laughs> one of the big um, sort of themes of the Assassin's Order and the Assassin's Creed games is the eagle. You've got eagle vision. Like there, there's so much that the eagle is the uh, is the essentially the mascot of the Assassin's Order. And with this, as for the top of the movie, they were establishing where we are. We see an eagle flying. Cool, awesome. Every establishment shot. Every time we go back into the Animus, even when if we like jump to a new place in time, it's, it's an eagle. There's the eagle. There's just a big eagle. Like a, if you're gonna do that, that's awesome. If you're doing that in in modern day, do a helicopter shot and and add the eagle in there. There were some weird spotty moments of CG, but the, most of the time it was mm-hmm. with a sweet assassin move. So and it was, I was okay. Like, all right, that's fine. Yeah, there was a couple of weird little moments in there, mm-hmm. but yeah. overall, yeah, overall it was really well. Overall, the, well the well CG done. was pretty good. Mm-hmm. Um, man, so so now let's move on to the cast because this film got like <laughs> when it was announced. Uh, we knew that Michael Fassbender was going to be taking a personal stake in this. He had his own production. This is going to be his first movie as a producer, mm-hmm. um, so he was set to star. Marion Cotillard joined like right before production started. Um, Jeremy Irons uh, it plays the the one of the overarching villains in the movie. Um, Brendan Gleeson uh, plays Cal's father. Um, Charlotte Rampling uh, plays Ellen Kay, the head Templar, who is. Very, very little of what we see, but it's very reminiscent of when we were when we watched uh, Silent Hill, and there was it was that yeah. creepy lady in the church. That was a very similar role. Mm-hmm. Um, I think she nailed it though. I, I think <laughs> so too. That... <clears throat> and then we had. Um, do we un- unfortunately I, I didn't get all the names of all of our assassins, but there's one in particular. Michael Kenneth Williams played Musa, uh, who is also in the Abstergo facility, a fellow assassin. Um, and what was intriguing about him is after the fact, you, mm-hmm. you brought up something really interesting about what his origin may be. So it's been suggested um, that he is that he actually appears, his, his ancestor in uh, Liberation, mm-hmm. and he's uh, ba- Baptiste? Baptiste, yeah. yeah. Uh, so I, I didn't play Liberation, so I don't I know for certain. I got about to Baptiste. Okay. But the, the, once you get past the... Um, the, the Desmond games, for mm-hmm. whatever reason, in case you haven't played them, um, whatever reason they finished with Desmond, uh, it you don't really have the connection to the future, so you can't... Like, there isn't, oh, hey, here's this other assassin, here's this other person in Abstergo, here's this... You're just playing. You're just sort of playing in. there. Not to say that there aren't moments in in the future like in syndicate there's there's some some stuff that takes place in the present day mm-hmm. where you see some familiar characters from the from the Ezio okay. era um etc cetera, etc cetera. but right. um for for a movie that and and for a, a story that completely rebuilds the idea of Assassin's Creed of the Assassin's Order to have or to suggest I mean, technically, this all takes place in in his, quote unquote history, but mm. to suggest that we have a character that is a link to games and stories that may or may not exist in this world, I think is well, an interesting choice. It's it's been said that this is an original story set in the same world, mm. although which is a little hard to reconcile for me because 
they went through so much like with Ezio and with that whole plot line. So for this to be kind of... For us just to be at the other end of 2012, which was a huge sticking point in the franchise for four or or more games, depending on if you played the ones on DS and and, and et cetera. So so for that to be such a sticking point and then go, oh, nah, this is, there's one Abstergo and it's a new thing is is interesting. Mm -hmm. Maybe in the wrong way. Yeah, I don't know that it quite works within the same world. Mm. It wasn't quite established to be if this able is a, to exist together. If this is its own world, cool. Mm. But yeah. if that but if it means that <clears throat> Desmond shows up at some point and uh, and he exists in this world, great. that'd be great because that means we get we get some of our boys back mm-hmm. um in, including Edward Kenway, you know, uh, all of all of his his extended genetic family. Um right. that would be cool, but the tease um, we'll get we'll get to that. We we got a tease of the history of uh, Callum Lynch and Ag- the 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 people in between Callum Lynch and Aguilar uh, that took place in the Assassin's Order. It was mm. a super cool moment. It was. <laughs> but um, <laughs> Michael Michael Fassbender, all all of our all of our actors believed this material one hundred percent and allowed a a sort of a a helping hand to people who weren't as connected to the material. What, what did you think of these performances? I mean, I thought everyone was very convinci- convincingly into it. Mm-hmm. Uh, there wasn't anyone who was just kind of like, oh, yeah, this is ridiculous, but I'm <laughs> here. It was... I guess this is a, this is a movie where I can get a paycheck. <sighs> yeah, I mean, and... I, I can't. I won't argue that we got tons of character development or like really deep backstories, mm. uh, which I don't think was even the point. But the acting that we did get was very solid and very believable. We got just enough to get us to the next bit, yeah. which um, which was something that I had a little bit of an issue with with Rogue One was where we didn't get. And we're not going to talk about that. If you want, if you want to hear me talk about that, you can go to Jedi Alliance. But um, with this, we got. Enough of everybody's wants, ambitions, past, mm-hmm. uh, in order to think enough about the decisions that they're going to make. Because there's an amazing scene between Cal and his father, um, who f- Cal is, is so, or Joseph is supposedly responsible for the the death of Cal's mother. He mm-hmm. walks in on his mom dead, blood coming from her neck, and her dad and her his dad's uh, hidden blade out, bloody hood up, just like. The blood that runs through you is not your own. Duh! Mm. What a a thing to say to a child. Right? Like, and this is our first introduction to how the assassins operate, which was, yeah. I mean, jarring for a kid and and pretty a pretty good moment for us, too. Mm -hmm. I, uh, uh, so the the scene where uh, Riken, who is the character that Jeremy Irons plays, gives Cal an opportunity. Here, there's your dad. Here's the blade that he used to kill your mom. Why, why don't you kill him and then come back whenever you want? So it, mm-hmm. it was, and to, but to have that, despite we knew exactly what we needed to know about that relationship, yep. and the scene played out wonderfully. Yeah, like we, yeah, like we could have led to believably expect. Mm-hmm. Um, and Marin Cotillard's uh, relationship with her father, in terms of this is all the work that she's doing, but he keeps taking the credit. She she puts all of this science and all this time all, all of the science and all of this time in. He ends up taking the credit. He goes to the Templars and 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 tells them, "Oh, hey, no, th- this this is what's happening. So don't don't you worry." the the big The big thing that that they do share with in terms of concept wise with the games is that uh, Abstergo <laughs> and uh, the Templars at large are looking for the Apple of Eden, and they need the genetic descendant of Aguilar, Callum Lynch, in order to find that Apple of Eden. And despite all of that heaviness, we didn't get too much into why it's an Apple of Eden. Why is it an apple? Is is it the Garden of Eden? Which we know it is. Yes. But, you know, <laughs> what we didn't get into the heavy, like, history and mm-hmm. heavy-handed quasi-religious alien stuff. It was just right. enough to get you interested that this was a historical uh, a historical uh, artifact and they needed it for something. Yeah, we did not get into the mythology. I mean, almost at all, mm. realistically. There were a couple of little like clues and moments, but other than that, it was not like a heavy hitter in the, in the movie. And they didn't... 
I don't think even until Brotherhood was when we get heavy, heavy implications as to mm-hmm. what those who came before were. Um, but we didn't we didn't get any of that in this. The the performances both and I, and I, I got to hand it to Michael Fassbender is is it, he was he was supposed to be Spanish. How is this? How is this Irish British dude supposed to be Spanish? He pulled it off pretty they, well, pretty damn well. Yeah, and I mean, I, I think costuming can have a lot of credit for that. Costuming, was, makeup, but also his if he went to a vocal person mm, because his mm-hmm. pronunciations were on point and it wasn't he, he didn't have a British accent while trying to be <laughs> Spanish. Thank God for that. Yeah, thank goodness. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I, I I love this cast. I'm I'm excited to well if if it moves forward I'm excited to see it move forward supposedly on the red carpet uh, they already started pre production on the next movie so it seems like this is enough of a powerhouse to where we're getting more whether we want it or not to keep going with it yeah mm-hmm. um, so so let's talk about the uh, the plot uh, what, what can be called the plot just because we say that for every movie <laughs> um, the Templars are looking for an apple of Eden they find Callum Lynch. Callum Lynch needs to relive the genetic memories of Aguilar from uh, from the right smack dab in the middle of the Spanish Inquisition in order to find the Apple of Eden, and the Apple of Eden uh, will stop, will be the cure for violence, is what the Templars are rolling with, which, if you're yeah. familiar with the Templar way of life, that means subjugation, yeah. uh, no violence under their rule. That's their nice spin on things. We're going to make everybody nice. It's going to be a cure for violence. Okay, we're going to control you. Yep. Um, we're just going to hold it and it's going to glow, much like in the games themselves. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, at, playing with Ezio and you finally get to play with the <laughs> apple is so flipping cool. Um, <laughs> and and the one thing that I will say about... Uh, but I mean, that's essentially the plot. You follow mm. Cal. He doesn't necessarily believe anything that's happening. He thinks he's going crazy. We see, like in the game, we see the bleeding effect. So he starts to see... Aguilar in the real life and mm-hmm. and Aguilar sort of kind of trains him a bit. That, right. that was a little weird. Yeah, it was a little unclear what was going on at first. Yeah. Um but okay. It ended up working. I think. Just okay. That was <laughs> Do you think that the plot or do you think that the film was paced well? Do you think it was enough to give us a break here before going straight into the action enough to let us know a little bit more about the apple let us know a little bit more about the templars and so on and so forth okay so personally i think it worked really well for me Mm. i liked the pacing however i can see how it would be too slow and a little jumpy for a lot of people so i do i do see that it worked for me um because there was a lot of the movie where it seemed like very little was happening Mm. But I think there was a lot of setup going on and a lot of like little things falling into place that had to come together. So it was good, you know, for me. Yeah, I, I, I think there were a couple of places where it was a little bit slow, but then it picked right back up and like mm-hmm. zero to 60. You so, needed that little moment. Yeah, so it was nice to, in, in hindsight, it was nice to have those breaks before we got into the huge, super long escape scene, um, mm-hmm. f- both escape scenes for that, yeah. <laughs> for that yeah. matter. Um, and um, as, uh, <laughs> as you talked about uh, earlier in the show, uh, some folks are a little bit upset that there was there wasn't enough in the past and there was a mm-hmm. lot in the present. And I agree with you that I, I was happy to see the stuff in the present because one of my main uh, complaints, quote unquote complaints, one of my major issues with the Assassin's Creed game franchise is we got teased about tw- 2012. We got teased mm-hmm. about this, we got teased about that. Any of the stuff in the uh, in the Desmond parts were traditionally... Uh, hey, just do some parkour and find this. Not a lot of super action, though the escape from Abstergo Abstergo at the end of uh, Assassin's Creed Mm -hmm. 2. And then in uh, Revelations, they switched it to the, like, weird first-person thing where you got to experience Desmond's life. They didn't know what they wanted to do with the real life, and we never really got the application of what the assassins learned in modern day well and how modern day assassins would function and whether the order would still be a thing even Mm -hmm. so seeing that in this movie where they kind of clearly set it up i mean it was a very one-sided setup because it seemed like the templars pretty much had the knowledge and control of almost all of the assassins 
at the, or all of the descendants of the assassins. Or so they think. Or well, okay, so they. Or, think. or so they. They found. had the ones that they have found. Yeah. It seems like they kind of collected them because that. I mean, at the Abstergo facility, they had a ton of assassins. That was a huge facility it, too. I mean, and they had assassins. You know, descendants of all ages. Mm -hmm. So. It was very interesting to see that kind of culture and then how the assassin culture worked within those grounds. Mm -hmm. um, so that was that was pretty cool. Uh, yeah, and <laughs> so getting to see that, getting to see the application, getting to see the when at the end when our our modern day assassin heroes uh, escape from Abstergo and uh, Callum picks up a bow, and Musa picks up the bombs, and pe people mm -hmm. pick up what's uh, what's fam what they've become familiar with because of what they learned. And yeah. from what we've seen through Aguilar, and, and and what Cal learned through Aguilar, all of this makes sense. Oh, that's what they learned in their Animus experience. That's what they learned in mm -hmm. that Animus experience. And it was it was awesome as hell. The the final confrontation, the f the final super stealthy scene, yep. and and the reestablishment of the Assassin's Order in modern day times. I think because the games haven't done that, that leaves us so much room. Yes. And so many places to go. Yep. I'm really excited to see the Assassins kind of coming together. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I was really excited from the get go because as soon as they lead Cal to kind of the community era mm -hmm. area where all the assassin or all the descendants of the assassins kind of get to train or eat. Uh, it was very clear that there was still an us versus them community. So the, oh, sure. so like Abstergo tried to spin this thing where you're helping us, you know, you were you help us, bad in mm. the past. The assassins are bad and evil. And by helping us, you're one of the good guys kind of thing. And they Violence really pushed that. Violence is a disease. That sort of mm -hmm. thing but to kind of see i guess you hit a you hit a certain point where you're back in the past with your ancestor or reliving that life where mm -hmm. you realize what's going on and it seemed like a lot of them were very self-aware and they had this kind of very angry subculture brewing it was ready to pop oh yeah so so when it finally did it was awesome then we had a badass like callum lynch to head the thing though i'm mm -hmm. pretty sure everybody else could have handled themselves pretty well oh, yeah. um <laughs> so the 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 fact that the assassins are here. The assassins are back. It's it's such a cool way to end the movie in modern day London. Mm -hmm. And if that could imply that we we find the descendants of the fries, and and yeah. and that's how we start to we go backwards from the games because the industrial revolution is an awesome place to set a movie. And every and and Great. historical pieces do really well at the box office. So I think because. The, the marketing of this was actually no the marketing of this kind of had half and half of the modern as f from the classic so mm -hmm. um, I'm I'm I really want to see more from this franchise so and and so when we get to our stuff at the end <laughs> you've answered that question it'll be a little bit it'll <laughs> be a little bit obvious so um, we've talked about the uh, if you look closely you can see the artifacts from the different assassins games boing um, the I love how we start the movie with the creed itself yes. Uh, with the nothing hard. is true, everything is permitted. That entire thing—that's what starts the movie, and it even it, it could possibly even set up the idea that what we're seeing in the movie may not may be. Oh God, could you imagine if oh, no. if the uh, we didn't there wasn't something after the credits or so we know, but could you imagine if at the end of the movie there was the watermark for Abstergo Entertainment, oh. and then you're like, oh, was was it real? Wasn't it? Was this well, something that they wanted us to see? Because that's what the games played with for a while, too. They still are. They still well, are. yeah, the, the games, I mean, they draw very, very heavily on that idea. Like of, with this boy. Yes. All over the place. It's, yeah, I mean, they're constantly trying to manipulate public opinion. Mm. You know, that's how they operate, and that's what makes them so dangerous and so interesting as kind of this evil corporation. So that's what we're going to be blaming all of the negative reviews on is Abstergo itself. <gasps> they're coming in, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and the, the fact that we got the Apple of Eden, and are you happy that... We only have the implication as of right now that there's one piece of Eden. Because for, for those of you who don't know, if, if you're a fan of the movie more so than a fan of the rest of the games, the first Apple of Eden unlocks the locations to other pieces of Eden that have other abilities. 
Yeah, and they they really didn't go anything into that. They really didn't even go into what the apple would like actually do. It was just like it's gonna erase violence. Because Ry- Riken turned it on, and what I was hoping for is that we would see the map, like we see at the end of Assassin's yes. Creed One, and then just boop 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 boop. And that's where all the assassins' temples are, and that would set it up. Mm-hmm. But yeah, sorry. Okay. I, please no, continue. I, I agree. Uh, that would have that would have kind of been that. I think that would have been a really nice kind of hint. Like, okay, you got one of the apples. You're not done. <laughs> you think you're done? We got sequels. Um, Good luck, guys. And there is one of, one of the things that, that I do uh, dislike about some movies is that they don't end. You know, it's before they end, they set up for more movies. Right. So that one of the things that I liked about Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them is we got announced before the movie came out, oh, we're going to do five of these, five in this world. And I was like, oh, well, this, yeah. isn't, this isn't going to be anything. But the first movie came out and it ended. And it it did. an ending. And then mm-hmm. you're like, I wonder what's going to happen next. And this movie has an ending. There's an implication for more things to come, but not like, let's go back to the Animus. Like, none right. of that Right, and it's not like... It, right, well, okay, I'm just going to go ahead and spoil the ending right now. Go ahead. I mean, the assassins retrieve the apple. They have the apple at the end of the movie. So, whereas it would be a clear, oh no, we need a sequel, if the Templars kept it, by giving it to the assassins, they do effectively end that chapter. Mm-hmm. And and uh, Sophia gives sort of an implication of like, oh, it's just beginning. Right. But it's just like, <laughs> even if we didn't get more Matrix movies, the end of Matrix 1 is Neo knows he's the one, y'all better watch out, mm-hmm. cool, world's going to be fine because we know we have some, the, the good guys are in, have some control. Right. Um, and actually, speaking of the Matrix, uh, one of the reasons why they changed the Animus was because they wanted to avoid comparisons to the Matrix, which I think is Isn't smart. That- and again, the Animus was a great idea, and it does kind of fill that gap of why they have this new, you know, more than muscle memory, why they actually have the ability to go out and perform these moves mm-hmm. and, all of a sudden. And, uh, and all of this intense physical strain that they get from lying on a couch. Mm-hmm. Uh, hey, man, so what, <laughs> when I wake up from a nap, I kind of want to take another nap. I feel that. That's the way of Me things. Um, so this movie began, uh, this movie was announced in 2011. And it's been a, journey. <laughs> it's been a it's bit been of a, a journey. journey. Um, and uh, as we mentioned before, Michael Fassbender has been attached for quite some time. Um, there, th- it's been a bit of a road. It's been a bit of a bumpy road. There are a lot of a lot of writers came in to uh, to work on this movie three or we four wrote it at a this point. Of times, didn't they? Yeah, I mean, yeah. It went through. It went through some scripts. The last rewrite was in April yes, two thousand four by Adam Cooper and Bill Collage, uh, who were hired to rewrite the script. And then uh, by the end of April, uh, the current director, Justin Kurzel, uh, was in talks to direct and he stayed on. And he hired his brother to do the music, which was pretty cute. It's pretty adorable. Got to get, hey, you got to keep in the family. Why not? <laughs> um, now, this was something that I found interesting was it was originally announced to be a work under Sony, but Sony dropped it like a bad habit. <laughs> and uh, Ubisoft CEO Yves Guimont. Uh, confirmed that New Regency was going to be involved and that 20th Century Fox was go- got involved a little bit before that. Mm-hmm. Um, ye- yeah. So as weird <laughs> as um, some of the, the pre-production stuff was that sort of spell- could spell the end for Assassin's Creed, it still mm-hmm. turned out pretty good despite... Countless rewrites, and, yeah. and I say countless, but a lot but, of rewrites. And that, that's enough. I mm-hmm. mean, that's that's a pretty solid amount of rewrites there, uh, you, but it pulled through. Mm-hmm. Um, do you think? And and so um, back in May 2015, uh, Alicia Vikander uh, from uh, Man from Uncle and the the most latest uh, Jason Bourne movie, Jason Bourne. Yeah, yeah. That's that's right. People are when they run out of numbers, they just use their names like John Rambo, right. Jason Bourne. Mm-hmm. Um, she gave up her role in this movie. She was going to be Maria mm-hmm. to be in Jason Bourne, and I I don't think it would have affected it too much. No. Yeah. No, I think it it remained solid, and you know, made a decent choice to or a good yeah. choice. Yeah. I mean, you some it, sometimes you got to go with a with a sure thing, and if it pays you more money, it pays you more money. Yep. Um, speaking of money, uh, <laughs> let's talk about <laughs> some uh, critical. Uh, this movie came out on Wednesday, December 21st, 2016. Uh, it did not have a great opening day. No. Uh, hopefully holiday weekend will help it out, but it's opening day. We don't have anything worldwide. This is only from stateside. Mm-hmm. $4.6 million, which for a $125 million budget, 
not that great, but uh, I think the um, if that counts for advertising, if that counts for mm-hmm. the the all of the hot topic stuff, if it counts for this, the the world that they're making, I think will it, it will live on. Mm-hmm. Because uh, you've seen the Hot Topic line. It looks pretty badass. They've got a pretty cool line. Yeah. They've got some jackets that, you know, I'm eyeing. <laughs> <laughs> and, and the thing about the, the story of Aguilar is I, I would love to play this as a game. I would love to play this as the next Assassin's Creed, mm-hmm. even if it's just, like, the novelization or if it's the longer version of sure. the same story. Why not? And we get a new uh, a new line of Assassin's Creed games from it. I'm flipping all about it. Great. Yeah, please Ma- make that their next game. Sure. And and here's the interesting part. So um, I this was uh, <laughs> this morning when I grabbed the uh, the critical um, IMDb has it at a seven point three out of ten, which is a little bit closer to what we're talking about. Whereas mm-hmm. Rotten Tomatoes has it at a nineteen percent critics score and no surprise a seventy four percent audience score. There's that audience score leveling it out again. Yeah, one of those crazy disparities. Mm. Uh, and I, yeah, I'm with the audience 100% on yeah. this one. And and that's why I was so, after the movie, we all sort of uh, crowded around Andrea to be like, you don't like the games, <laughs> did what think, did you think of the movie? <laughs> you don't know the games, so? Because, because sometimes we can be blinded by our fandom. And mm-hmm. I think that's what the, this, this show helps and hinders is like with, Final Fantasy XV, as a bit of an update, we saw Kingsglaive, <laughs> got super into that world, and you've beaten the game at this point. I have. And it's a huge game! And I started it again. I don't do that <laughs> ever. So they have, don't! There's a new game plus? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, at they least... just introduced it, so I started it again. I don't have time to do this. <laughs> I le- don't! At least it's a new game plus and not you just, I'm just going to play this game but, again. Yeah, but now I'm just super over I was super over-leveled playing the actual <laughs> game. So now I'm back at level like one and I'm level 65. It's it's disgusting. Nice. I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> then we won't. Um, but, but that's the sort of thing I ta- that we're talking about is <clears throat> w- whether or not we may be direct fans of a franchise like we are with this one, if it's a good movie, it's going to show through because the video game audience is a certain type of audience. Uh, we loved we Warcraft. Like what we like. We loved Warcraft. Uh, we liked Ratchet and Clank. I mean, soft spot. So, real soft real spot. Real soft spot. <laughs> and I, I noticed I said liked instead of loved. And if you want to go back and watch that episode because we had James Arnold Taylor, the voice of Ratchet, which is one of the highlights of, of my years having him in here. Can we, we love him. <laughs> oh, dude, we love him too. And I, I'm, I'm trying to get him back here for, for Jedi because... Of something that happened on Rebels, but we're not talking about that. Go back and watch our Ratchet and Clank episode, our Warcraft episode, our Angry Birds episode. It's the end of the surprisingly year. Surprisingly good. It's surprisingly good. And that's on Netflix now, so go watch yep. it on Netflix and watch our review. Um, we're, we're not quite wrapping up the show yet, but hey, it's the end of the year. I, I've absolutely loved the direction that the show has gone this year, and it, it's been an absolute blast, and we've we've... Expanded our horizons as a result. Yeah, you Both know, we've been introduced to a lot of things. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. seen a lot of movies I wouldn't have otherwise watched. <laughs> <laughs> too, too true. <laughs> oh boy, I, I was lucky. I missed the Hitman Absolution show. I was really lucky. That was early on. <laughs> um, so let's talk about some some reviews. Uh, Lucy O'Brien from IGN Movies. Uh, Though it's bolstered by some glorious action sequences and a stellar cast that really gives us their all, the lack of any levity whatsoever in Assassin's Creed amounts to a soulless experience that wastes its potential. Do you think, like, it's heavy. Yeah, I mean, I guess it's heavy. I don't think it's soulless by any means. There is some, there there is humor here and there. It may be a little creepy sometimes, like when Callum is singing about being crazy or... Keep talking about yeah, being hungry. Which I saw a lot of people kind of dinging that as a big negative. Dude. And I was <sighs> like, I don't think you understand what being in the Animus does to you. Mm-hmm. And I, I mean, I think they did an okay job kind of portraying how much of a strain that is, especially with you being flung all around that room. Yeah, and then the the bleeding effect and, and mm-hmm. him failing his first leap of faith and, and his brain not being able to, to handle it because he didn't want to do it. Right. I, yeah, I, I liked it. Now... Decent. I don't think there is no levity whatsoever, mm-hmm. but I think if you do too much humor, then that's so, I think that devalues the world you're trying to build. Right, and I yeah, I I don't see where they could have inserted a little more humor and still had it mm-hmm. work the way it did. 
Because Aguilar isn't a, from from what we see, Aguilar isn't a funny character. This no. is the middle of the damn Spanish Inquisition. You think he's gonna be yuck yucking it up? And he, I mean, we we didn't see much of of his character, but we saw that he was very wholly dedicated to this cause, both, and he was a very serious, yeah. <laughs> both wholly W H O L L Y and both H O L Y, because it's another thing. This is a religious. Uh, se- semi-religious basis Especially of this. Especially when we're back in the Spanish Inquisition. Mm-hmm. That would be like one of the heights of when this was a hugely religious argument. But also the, the Knights Templar being going back to the Crusades <laughs> and still being a major a major player in this world now. Mm-hmm. There's <laughs> They were still really organized for the modern day. It was terrifying. Super terrifying. Speaking of and they all looked they all looked pretty sweet though in their in their sweet Templar oh, yeah. robes. Oh yeah. Just stabby stabby. Um but there don't don't let it I, I don't I don't think this is entirely accurate, but I do respect the 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 fact that it it, it it's not that funny, but it mm-hmm. shouldn't have to be that funny. Right. I, yeah, I'm not sure what kind of comedy they were looking for mm-hmm. in this. Jack Black where, starts in Assassin's yeah, Creed. You want Jack Black running around in the Spanish Inquisition? Dude, if we I mean if we get an Ezio movie can he be Leonardo da Vinci? I hope so. I'd be down for oh, that. Oh, I hope so. See, <laughs> Ezio has much, but and and we know from playing the games, Ezio has much more of a sense of humor because that's his character. Yes. It was pretty clear that Aguilar was not that kind of character, mm-hmm. and, and that's that was that wasn't and you know, Edward Kenway's character. Was not. Yeah, Altair Edward was Kenway. not. I mean, Connor, God no. Oh, Connor. Let's not get started about our, our boy Connor. <laughs> At least if it was about Connor, we would have almost no humor. Mm. A dude, all. especially um, like Nothing. American Revolution. That's not mm. nothing. Uh, <laughs> so, oh man! Here, here's another review from Peter Travers at Rolling Stone. So, what if philosophical depths are depths are out of the film's reach? There's a seed of ambition in this one that suggests the transfer of a video game to the screen doesn't always have to be a suicide mission, and that's something. Well, you know, I, I have seen the reviews. Well, it's the best video game movie so far. The bar's low. But that's not saying much. I, this guys. movie does a lot. Like, I'm really excited for, um, also on this network, there's a show called Sci-Fi, Sci-Fi Weekly, uh, where they talk about all things sci-fi, movies, TV, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And I was, they're going to be doing, um, what's the what's the new movie with uh, uh, Chris uh, Chris Pratt and... Passengers? Yeah, they're doing, they're doing Passengers. And I'm like, no, 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 do Assassin's Creed, because there's such heavy sci-fi in this movie, uh-huh. too. So, Absolutely. like, th- th- it... It tries a lot. It's not, it's, to compare it to The Matrix, which very few people do, thank goodness, is lazy, is greedy and lazy. So, it, this movie takes a lot of chances, and I feel like they pay off. And and if, if you're with us, and, and you're, you're a member of the Creed, and, <laughs> and you want to see your, or a member of the Order, and you follow the Creed, um, take your friends this holiday season. If you get a movie yeah. gift card, support this movie. It's not in a lot of screenings on the opening day. It was next to Hard impossible to, to find a screening. <laughs> And the, the theater we were in had maybe a hundred something theaters. Oh, seats? it was it was tiny, and it was relatively full. Yeah. For being you know, at a kind of random time on a Wednesday night. Yeah. It's, and yeah. you know, in such a small theater, mm-hmm. so. And such a popular theater too. Mm-hmm. But regardless, um, the, the I, I I hope that some more positivity comes out about about this movie. Um, I'm excited to see what, what some of my other uh, movie critic friends think about it. Um, let's uh, let's move on from that. Um, <laughs> something, let's go to our, our sort of final games. Um, we like to talk about our favorite lines on this. It's a little bit harder uh, when we're watching them in the theater to sort of remember <clears throat> and write them down because you don't want to be disruptive, et cetera, et cetera. But did you have any? I mean, I totally, in, in the beginning when they did the nothing is true, everything is permitted, when they did For the me. Creed chills, just was like, yeah. yes. We're in yes. it! There. Um, I, I liked the, uh, the his father when he said, your blood is not your own. Because that, that sets up a mystery of just like, was that not his mom? Like, was it this? Was it that? And it, and it sets up the, a very important scene later in the movie, too. Mm-hmm. Okay, so speaking on that. Yeah. Mom is the one with the ancestry, right? Dad was brought into it. Mom is the one with the ancestry. Yeah. Okay. Just because I, I distinctly got that mm-hmm. that feeling that he didn't really have any ancestry of his own. I he also do like brought. the um, the swerve. Um, if you're a fan of the game, you know that a lot of the descendants are born. I mean, 
especially from the very first descendants, are born from a a someone from the Assassin's Order and somebody from the Templar Order. Mm -hmm. And it looked like we may have been going in that direction. Right. But they stopped they stopped that shit right at the end and it yep. and I think it made it a lot more interesting. That was that was cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, cuz that was the first thing I thought too. You know, that it was an assassin and a Templar. Mm. And, and and especially with Maria fun. like, "No, you have to keep him safe. He has to stay healthy." Science. Yep. All about the science with you, Sophia. <laughs> uh of course, the the he's synchronizing like that was really bad. That's really badass. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> or, or he's sinking or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, oh, when when Musa was just like, uh, we think you'll really like it here. We we have a full an uh, open menu, but we but we suggest the chicken. And and <laughs> then the 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 lady comes up and says the exact same thing. That was that a was good a good moment. one. That he was, was a, a great one. character. I, yeah, I would like good. little side stories about his life, you know, in this little facility before Callum comes along. Yeah, if we, if I'll take it. I sh I think it would be cool if we got shorts of the other assassins yeah. in, in the movie, and that'd be something for the Blu-ray. Mm -hmm. Give us fun. give us little glimpses. Give us that background that we didn't necessarily get during the movie itself. Mm -hmm. I'll take it. When you have to find all of the extra stuff, uh, the the glitches or this and the <laughs> that in the Animus in order to unlock more more lore stuff. Uh, did you have any other lines? No, that was those. All right. So, since this movie just came out, and Assassin's Creed is a really recent franchise, we're not going to be doing a recast like we do, but we're going to talk about one of our fun scenarios that we've been doing the past couple of times. We did it with Kingsglaive. Go back and watch that. We talked about um, uh, an ideal video game road trip and what characters you want to take on that. So go back and watch that episode and take part in that conversation. But this one, uh, it, it's a little... It's a little out there. It's a little would you rather, <laughs> but uh, I kind of like it. So, <clears throat> you can get one assassin's power or a, an assassin power or an assassin artifact. So, like the like a, a, a the hidden blade <laughs> or one of the Fry's uh, sword canes or like Xiao Jun's uh, sword or so, or something. Um, Ezio's I don't know. Knife belt. I don't know. You get you get Ezio. You get like a like a Sleep big. Darts, big oh, dude. Um, you get like a big mouth Billy Bass, but it's uh, but it's Ezio. Um, Where can I buy that? <laughs> I need it. So you so you get a power and or or you get a power or a a relic, but you have to take a leap of faith off of a particular thing, and you're guaranteed to survive. You're guaranteed to survive, and you got a hay bale down at the bottom. Where would you where and it's got to be high? Where would you jump off? And what would you pick? Or or would you just say, you know what? I'm kind of cool with this. I don't need this lie. <laughs> so so here's the thing about that. Mm -hmm. I've done a miniature leap of faith at San Diego Comic Con a couple oh, years yeah. ago because they brought the Assassin's Creed obstacle course. I dressed up in my assassin costume and I ran through that obstacle course. All right, all right. And at the end, they're like, you can go do the leap of faith. And I'm like, you know what? I'm here. I stood in this line. I am going to do it. I'm terrified of heights. I'm terrified of jumping off of things. It was the worst thing I've <laughs> ever done in my life. I was so scared. I did it though. It was terrifying okay, right. and it was awful. <laughs> it wasn't even that high. But it was awful. So, well, like a story, story and a half. Probably thereabouts. And yeah. was it like one of the big stunt, like stunt yeah, person? Yeah. So they had they had a big like um, kind of platform. So mm -hmm. you climbed up and you stood there and you could have your cool moment where you, you were ready. Yeah, you. Were, <laughs> I definitely did the little perch thing and nice. like moved around. <laughs> Mostly just to kill time, so I didn't have to jump as quickly. <laughs> just like like people watching, you're like, oh, that's so cool, and you're just going, oh god, oh god, oh my god, oh my god how god. am I gonna do this? How this am I gonna do this? Sucks. <laughs> and you know, there were people in front of me who were like actually doing the dive and like yeah. going for it. I ended up just like throwing myself over and does <laughs> thing. It was it was, <laughs> it was not good. But um, yeah, they had that huge pill, you know, pillow like. <laughs> Essentially like that. I mean, yeah, it let's, was more of a cannonball. Let's do that. But, yes. Do it again, just like. <laughs> oh wow, that was the tip of the skull too. <laughs> Sorry, yes. We're not trying to kill him. No, not trying to kill him. Uh, <laughs> that happens later. So, I mean, as so much as... So you've kind of experienced I've, it. I've, yeah. But, but would you jump off of, like, let's go to, uh, let's go to Ezio. Would you talk, the, the Vatican, or uh, the Il Colosseo, the Colosseum. It's always really cool when you're doing it as Ezio. <laughs> And I mean, what I wouldn't give for a pair of my own hidden blades, like, yeah. those are awesome. But would you take a leap of faith in order to get that? See, I feel like, yeah, I would totally do it. And then you're like, all right, let's go do it. No. But, but again, 100% no. <laughs> you can survive. See, but that's not, it's the falling. It's the, like. I'm not if, scared of the landing. No, I but knew even I'd if, be okay landing. But even if you 
you no matter what happens, a wind takes you a little away, you land like okay. solid, no matter no okay. matter what. I'm okay. You're See, okay. But the landing is not what terrifies me. It's, it's the, the falling. falling. Yeah. It's the falling. Okay. And right. you know, yeah. <laughs> I don't I don't think So you I, don't think you could do that? I, I might talk big, I'd be like, Yeah, let's do it. I would do anything for something like that. Coliseum is like three or four three or four stories high, maybe a little bit taller. Um here here's what I would do. You can buy me some drinks first, so yeah. I don't remember <laughs> then maybe. Maybe. I think I would do without the uh the firing squad on me. Okay. A similar version of what Aguilar did near the end of the movie. All right. Where it would one. be a leap of faith into water as okay. opposed to a leap of faith into a flipping hay bale or a hay cart totally or whatever. Safe. The hay cart. <laughs> Sorry. God. There was a hay cart. There it was, was the hay cart. It's pretty amazing. It's because something something that, that got me with it that I, I would actually add as, a, as an additional controller, positive controller toss moment is as he, he posed and he went down. And right before he landed, threw something to break the water and then dove in. Which is the which is what you do. That was really cool. That was a nice touch. So now I probably wouldn't have sense of mind to do that, and I would probably just belly flop. <laughs> um, but if I did if I did a Does does safe mean not hurting like hell because you belly flopped into the water? Or does it just mean you survive it? I don't know. <laughs> you know what? Uh, judges. Um, <laughs> I, I, I would say there there may be some discomfort. Okay. But not but you lo, you live no broken bones maybe a okay. couple of bruises maybe a couple of cuts depending so on so relatively good shape relatively good shape because right. the assassins can l- fly off of however flipping tall and, and survive good. so I would take a leap of you faith do that a, barrel roll a thing, high leap fine. Of, and you're fine uh, a high leap of faith uh, into uh, water and I would get. Which power? That's the thing. <laughs> um, I would actually say I would I would say landing because even All if right. it's like two stories high, you can just duh, land and you're good. And you're good. Either right. that or the ability to resync, which isn't necessarily an oh. ability of the assassins; it's an ability of the animus. Mm-hmm. But that I think would be cool if you're like, oh, fucked up. Let's just <laughs> try one more time. One more time. Redo. God, would um, everyone want that? that? That's a good one. <laughs> that's a good one. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, before we go, before we give our final thoughts, um, really quickly, uh, the flicking critic in uh, in the uh, brain, in the chat, mm-hmm. uh, wants to know if we were going to do box office predictions. So, I think, really oh. quickly, it's a, a budget of $125 million, uh, and opening day was four point six. That's no worldwide. Right. How do you think it's going <clears> to <throat> do worldwide, just in general? Worldwide. Well, I feel like this has... A pretty good appeal as far as overseas. Mm-hmm. Usually, something like this would do pretty well. So, um, let's be optimistic. Let's say it makes its money back. Just its money back. One hundred thirty, maybe. I I'm going to be very nice. Okay. And if we're going worldwide, because I know Warcraft made just enough in the U.S. but did awesome yeah. in China and overseas, I'm going to say it it's going to make two hundred million total. And that might be way overshooting it, which I hope it. Hey, that'd I be hope great. Not. Yeah, no, that'd be wonderful. Blow it out of the water, please. Mm-hmm. Go see this movie. Tell all your friends. Tell other members of the order. We gotta, we gotta take down the Templars that are reviewing this movie terribly. Please. Don't let them win. Go see this Go movie. See <laughs> Final thoughts on Assassin's Creed. I was way more impressed than I thought I was going to be, and happily so. I mean, mm. it was one of those things that was almost too overhyped for a while for me. So sure. I was like, oh my god, we're gonna go into this. It's gonna be a huge disappointment. I'm gonna be so sad. And I was not, and I was really into it. And I think it actually brought a whole new element to the games now, mm-hmm. like kind of uh, to the world of the games at least, as far as introducing the modern aspect. Mm-hmm. So that's something that maybe they'll actually explore more in, I hope in, so a, too. in a further movie, and that would be great. <laughs> I, I agree with the reviews that this is one of the best video game movies that, that's ever been made. Uh, this, Warcraft... Um, Angry Birds. Uh, we got a lot of really good video game movie adaptations this year. We're and on upswing. Yeah, we're, we're doing well. Um, and I hope that these movies have an opportunity to have a life elsewhere because the video mm-hmm. game community may not also be the community that goes out to the theater. 
that may they may wait for VOD. Like af well, after mm -hmm. I tweeted a lot, uh, after after we were tweeting our reviews last night, I, I got a lot of people saying I might wait for it on VOD, and I'm like, no, 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 go out to this the theater. Is, you know, and that's the thing. This is the time we do need to be going out and supporting these movies. Mm -hmm. uh, that's how we keep getting them made. Yeah. You know, if we go and support, and yeah, it's great to see the money come in on VOD or you know after the fact, but also sh a strong showing at the box office that's going to go a long way. Yeah, and and during Christmas there may be a little bit more of a leeway because a lot like Moana's still out and dominating. Rogue, Rogue One? One is still out and it's only been out a week, so it's it's probably it's a hard. Yeah, that's I mean, um, uh, Illumination just came out with Sing. You mm -hmm. know, which is big. There's going to be, there's a lot of uh, Academy Award bait. So La La Land Fences is coming out next week for Christmas mm -hmm. Day, which is, I'm a theater person. And to, to put out an, uh, an August Wilson uh, on uh, Christmas Day, it's very interesting. I'm really excited <laughs> for that movie. But regardless, um, take your nerd friends, take your regular friends, take your parents, take mm -hmm. take your, your brothers. This is a good, this is a good experience to share with your family. Um and I think it goes without a shadow of a doubt that um, we both give this movie a particular rating. And the way that we mm -hmm. give our ratings here on Video Game Movie Anatomy, if this is your first episode, is we either give it a game over, which is let the series end, or an extra life. We want to see this series continue in any way, shape, or form. And I believe, uh, Stacy, Extra life. Extra life. <laughs> uh, we both give the Assassin's Creed franchise an extra life. Uh, and I'm pretty sure you will, too. Uh, if you've got, made it through this point and you've listened to all of our spoilers and you still haven't seen the movie, what the hell's wrong with you? Go out and get see. The theater. Go out and see Assassin's Creed. Use your gift certificates that you that you get for Christmas. Do yourself a favor. It is a wonderful time. Um, so we're going to be taking a little bit of a break. Uh, the studio is going to be closed for a couple of weeks. Um, so we're going to be catching up on our gameplay. Yay! Um, I'm, I'm going to try to play something not Final Fantasy. <laughs> I'm excited to finish Syndicate. That's the, yeah. the top of my list because it's over a year old. I got it downloaded. I just need to play it. Boom. <laughs> um, so if, if you want to talk to us more, uh, if you want to suggest stuff for us to play, let us know. We do not have a, a movie that we're going to be covering next time because we don't know when we'll be back. Mm -hmm. So uh, make sure to follow us on Twitter. Make sure to follow the Popcorn Talk at the Popcorn Talk for more updates on that. But until then, Stacy, where can the folks find you online? Find me online on Twitter and Instagram at Stacy Shuttles, or all over the web at Nerds Doing Stuff, where I continue to be a nerd doing stuff. <laughs> uh, really quickly, um, Slim for uh, the 413th uh, says in chat, uh, I shouted Assassino, Assassino. <laughs> Uh, which I would have oh, loved to, to hear in our theater. Um, you can find me on Twitter at Mark B. Donica. You can find our boy Patrick at on Twitter at P to the D's, uh, where he hosts a podcast, Pixel by Pixel. Uh, they're going to be doing the year-end stuff soon, and I'm trying to get on him with that. Even though I haven't played too much, I'll just going to be talking about Overwatch the whole time, probably. <laughs> um, but uh, too, it's okay. <laughs> let us know what you're playing over Christmas. Uh, use the hashtag VGM Anatomy uh, to talk to us about the movie. Thank you so much for joining us on this episode. Uh, we will see you in the Animus. From the Popcorn Talk Network, the online broadcast network for movie talk. We bring you on an expedition. From producers Maria Menunos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire Popcorn Talk Network. We would like to thank you for tuning in. For questions or comments, be sure to visit PopcornTalk.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of the Popcorn Talk Network. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of the Popcorn Talk Network or its owners or principals.